this presentation this morning really sums up uh, my thoughts on a bit of working progress with respect to shuttle traders in the Caribbean. Over the last two years or so, myself and Dr. Hussain has looked at suitcase traders operating between Trinidad and Guyana. We looked at them in Jamaica and we looked at those who are called hucksters operating out of Dominica into markets like Guadeloupe and Martinique and St. Lucia and uh, Antigua and St. Kitts. We have, we have written separate papers on each of those on the activity of the traders in each of those countries. And as we got around to quote 2010, the thought occurred to me that maybe we should look to see what commonalities exist among the, these informal traders coming out of those three different places. The presentation this morning will give a bit of background, will say something about shuttle traders, and for the most part, we'll get into the comparative findings of these three empirical studies so as to allow us to get to the point of looking at the challenges faced by these traders and uh, to start the discussion in terms of recommendations and some suggested policies. I'm not going to go back on lots that were said yesterday, um, but we know that our economies have been facing major challenges in the global environment, and uh, of course the most recent is the impact of the global financial crisis. Um, that crisis brought with it a fall in global demand and consumer spending. Um, and, and we on this side therefore saw the decline in, in, community, in commodity prices, decline in remittances. We saw overall negative growth for, for, for the countries of the region. And we're seeing uh, increasing levels of unemployment. Uh, the ILO 2009 review of the of the labor market in the region um, pointed us to, 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 to the trend that we're seeing here. Um, and so last year, the annual GDP growth rate actually hit negative values for the first time in, 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 in several years, at least a decade. Notice, of course, that the unemployment rate is continuing to climb. So that made us begin to look at, at these traders against the context of the labor markets in the Caribbean. One feature of these markets is that they're in fact dual, uh, in, uh, com comprising both formal uh, market or formal employment and informal employment. The concept of the dual market can be traced to, to Lois's work on the employment dynamics between the capitalist and subsistence sectors of the economy. And he did that, in, of course, in the context of unlimited supply of unskilled workers from the subsistence sector. Now, if we equate capitalists with formal and subsistence with informal, then we get to interpret his work as suggesting that the expansion in the formal employment tends to result in less informal employment. And of course, if we do the reverse of that, um, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. Not the wrong button there. We then get to um, the work by, done by done by Andrew Dongs um, on the labor markets in the Caribbean, 
and he captured um, Lewis's interpretation slightly differently. He says a decline in the formal economy tends to result in an increase in the informal employment as persons eke out a living through informal activities. Now, we, we must be concerned about the increasing levels of unemployment, uh, and a lot of those uh, increasing levels are being measured in the formal sector. And if we take what Downs has said, then our concern has to be that as, as the levels of formal employment decrease, we could expect uh, the levels of informal employment across the region to increase. In fact, Dongs makes the point that informal employment has been a significant feature of the Caribbean labor markets, especially in countries like Guyana, Jamaica, and to a lesser extent, Trinidad and Tobago. And the estimates uh, on the screen give us a sense of the, the size of the inf informal employment as a percentage of total employment. Informal employment is, could be considered a subset of the informal sector. And um, we know that from the literature that two of the contributing causes to the growth of the informal sector are, one, the, the multiple steps that are required for someone to start a formal business in most of the Caribbean countries, if not all of them, the time that it takes and the frustration that's involved in moving through those steps. And there is also um, the question of market failure. Those are just two in the literature. In more recent times, Valletin has done some work uh, using an econometric model, and he sought to identify the causes of the size of the informal economy in Caribbean countries. And he, he admitted four, four causal variables. One was tax burden, the other was labor rigidity index, and the third was importance of agriculture, and the fourth was inflation. And what this slide shows, certainly in those countries that we are thinking about in the context of, 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 of this work, um, Trinidad and Tobago, you see that tax burden is dominant. In Dominica, you've got tax burden again being dominant. Jamaica, um, almost uh, equal uh, dominance from tax burden and labor rigidity. And um, in Guyana, we're seeing um, a slight shift there uh, in terms of tax burden and the importance of agriculture. Now, if, that, if those factors are dominant in the, in the informal sector, one of the questions that we have to to do some further work on as part of this study is to identify when you look at the informal employment, especially when it comes to the uh, informal traders, whether the dominant um, variables here still apply. And so that is some work that's left for us to continue. The, informal, the, the informalization of the labor market is, however, today manifested by, among other developments, the presence of hucksters, higglers, and ICIs in the marketplaces, stretching all the way from Georgetown up to Kingston. And if we look back at the work of Holder, 1988, we can define the higglers and the ICIs and hucksters. Notice that the difference between the huckster and the ICI is, of course, the fact that the Huckster uh, markets only agricultural produce. The ICI, on the other hand, markets non-agricultural produce. Um, so that we've got, most of us have a sense of, when we go to the airport here in Trinidad, we will see the um, ICIs from Guyana. Yes. Um, they come to the country, they purchase goods in the country, they try to travel uh, and carrying the goods as, as their luggage, yes, and they go back to Guyana and sell those goods. The income from that, they use to repeat the process. 
the hucksters in, in Dominica, they do the same thing. They purchase um, agricultural produce. They've got some, some loose contracts with farmers. And um, on a weekly basis, they will, in fact, package the, 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 the produce and they will travel with the produce across to, um, across to Martinique, Guadeloupe, St. Lucia. There's, in fact, a ferry service that operates between um, Dominica and, and Martinique and, uh, and Guadeloupe and St. Lucia that facilitates and supports that kind of activity. The Higglers, Hucksters, and, and other uh, shuttle traders have been studied extensively. And so there's a, a, a rich set of literature that we have used in our previous uh, papers on the trade in, in those three locations. I, however, want to look at the three recent studies that we were involved in, the ICIs in Guyana. And the reason we were interested in that is because the trade was intra-Caribbean. It involved non-agricultural goods. That was done in 2007. We used a sample size of 62. And all of the data collection was done in the city of Georgetown. The Huxers in Dominica, again, intra-Caribbean trade. Um, but this time, there was that feature of English-speaking country trading with French-speaking colonies. And that excited us a bit. Um, as I, and as I said, the focus was on agricultural goods. And the other feature about the Huxters in Dominica is the existence of this association that's called the Dominica Huxters Association. And we wanted to see what value that brought, what contribution that brought to the trade. And to the extent that uh, the contribution was significant, maybe we can, we, we can use that as, as, as a recommendation and a, a template for traders in other markets. That research was done in 2008. Um, the sample size was something of the order of 88, and the location was Roseau and Portsmouth. Uh, in Jamaica, uh, what you have is a pattern of, of the shuttle traders traveling out of Jamaica by air. So whereas in Dominica, it's by sea. Um, by, in Jamaica, it's by air. Um, very often to, 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 to Miami, to Curacao, and other free zone areas, Panama, and so on. And they will come back in, their, their, their goods, non-agricultural, uh, and they will sell those, and they can be seen, therefore, on the streets and in some of the arcades that have been specially built for that purpose in Jamaica. Again, that work was done in 2008, the sample size was 50, and the location was Kingston. We used purposive sampling right across the board, and we used the same structured questionnaire across all three surveys. The questionnaires focused on the demographics of the traders, details of their trade, problems encountered in the trade, and their own suggestions for improving the trade. The questionnaires were administered in a face-to-face -face, uh, mode. In terms of the findings, um, as expected and consistent with a lot of the earlier literature, um, females dominate that trade. The modal age group, as you'd see in Guyana, was 21 to 30, but it's much older in um, Dominica and in Jamaica. Uh, percentage with highest level of education to at least Form 5. 77% in the case of Guyana, but that drops significantly to 21% in Dominica and 26% in Jamaica. The number of children, the modal number of children, four in the case of Dominica, three in the case of Jamaica, two in the case of Guyana. Some of them operate as sole traders, meaning that they have no 